My name is Judy Klein and I'm an emergency physician at San Francisco General Hospital. I decided to make this short video just to answer some common questions that people were asking me. It's Sunday, April 5th, and um, the information that I'm gonna give is up to date, up to this date. So one of the uh, first questions that people are asking me is, is how is the Bay Area doing in terms of flattening the curve? Um, the social distancing and shelter in place orders um, in the Bay Area and California overall seem to have diminished the number of new cases of COVID that we're seeing each day relative to the numbers um, we expected if no such orders had been put into place. Um, this is what's meant by flattening the curve. Even though we're still not testing enough to know the actual prevalence of disease in the community, we do know how many people are coming into emergency departments and are needing hospitalization or ICU level care. And those numbers are much lower than we would have expected without the shelter in place orders. Another question that people are uh, asking me commonly is, what are my chances of getting seriously ill or dying if I'm healthy and under the age of 65? It's important to remember that the vast majority of people that are requiring hospitalization and ICU level care um, and who are dying of COVID are over 65 um, and or have underlying conditions such as lung disease, diabetes, chronic kidney disease, or other um, diseases that compromise the ability of their body um, and their lungs to fight infections. We are seeing some middle-aged and younger people who are getting sicker than we would expect, but these are definitely the minority. Um, some younger healthcare workers uh, are getting sicker than we would expect, and this may be due to the large amount of virus they're being exposed to if they are inadequately protected when doing certain procedures on sick patients. Another question that I'm commonly getting from families is how dangerous is this for my kids? One of the bright lights in an otherwise dim situation with COVID-19 is that children seem to be substantially spared of serious disease. Most of them will have no symptoms or minimal symptoms such as mild fever or cough or runny nose. There is very little data from China uh, or Italy for that matter about children because by and large they are um, not getting very sick, and so we're not being tested much, much for disease. Um, there was recently a case of a five-week-old in San Francisco who contracted the disease from her um, father, had a fever for a few days, and recovered well. Um, so this is a really good sign if a newborn can recover well from the disease. There were only two reported deaths of children in China out of 80,000 plus people infected, uh, no deaths in Italy, and only one thus far in the United States. Another question I'm commonly getting is how can I best protect myself when I go out to the grocery store or doctor's office? The primary means of spread for the COVID virus is through droplets. This means that if you get virus on your hands, you'll infect yourself when you touch your hands to your eyes, nose, or mouth. There is also evidence of what's called aerosol transmission, which means that the virus can sit suspended in air for a while after being coughed, sneezed, or exhaled out by a sick person. The best thing you can do is not touch your hands to your eyes, nose, or mouth while you're out in public and wash your hands vigorously and often with soap and water or with hand sanitizer containing more than 60% alcohol. Wearing a mask, preferably homemade, in public will help keep you from touching your hands to your face and also keep you from potentially infecting others before you have symptoms. It'll also provide some measure of protection to you from others who may be sick. Um, I ask though that please do not use surgical masks or N95 masks. These are in short supply and essential for healthcare workers to stay healthy um, and be able to take care of you and others should they get sick, should you get sick. People have also asked um, whether or not they can, people can pass the disease when they have no symptoms. And the best scientific evidence we have suggests that people without symptoms or those who have not yet developed symptoms can in fact spread the disease. This is the primary reason behind the current recommendation to wear a mask if you go out in public, to the grocery store, etc. What is important to remember is that what determines whether you get sick is not simply whether you come into contact with a virus, but also how much of it you get in your nose or mouth or eyes. People who actually have symptoms are likely to be coughing. Coughing is the way viruses catapult themselves out of a sick person, um, far away from a sick person and onto a new healthy host. 
people who don't have symptoms are likely only spreading the disease by breathing virus out or depositing it onto surfaces after their hands have touched their faces. Breathing just doesn't allow the virus to get out very far, not like coughing. Um, and simple social distancing at a distance of, of six feet or more will prevent you from getting infected this way. Another question I'm commonly uh, asked is, is it okay for me to go out, get outside, get some exercise? And how likely am I to get infected doing this? It is really important for you to continue to go out and get exercise and get outdoors. People who are overweight from lack of exercise or stressed or anxious because they're unable to get outdoors will have compromised immune systems and will be less able to fight disease should they get sick. You're very unlikely to get infected by walking by a person while outdoors on a trail unless they directly cough on you. Uh, the air circulation outdoors in the form of wind and air currents makes the likelihood of getting infected outdoors much, much lower than the likelihood of getting infected indoors. People are also asking me what is the status of testing in the Bay Area and what is the difference between the nasal swab tests and the blood tests I'm hearing about. Well, we are still not doing enough testing in the Bay Area or anywhere in the country for that matter to see who is infected with the virus and who's not, but this capacity is increasing daily. The threshold for testing people is getting lower and lower as this capacity increases. Currently, the test that's being done is a nasal swab looking for genetic information of the virus. This is called a PCR test or polymerase chain reaction test. The blood test is not yet being offered in the Bay Area, but it will test to see if you have antibodies against the COVID virus. This test will allow us to determine whether you had a recent infection or were infected several weeks or more ago because the test will stay positive even when you are no longer infected. It will allow us to determine how many people were infected, are now immune, and may never have had symptoms. People have also asked if I get COVID, how long am I infectious for? How long should I completely self-isolate and how do we know this? If you get sick with COVID, you're likely to be infectious for about 14 days. The current recommendation is to completely self-isolate. That means being alone in a room, masking yourself to go out into common areas in your house and allowing others to go um, run errands, go to the grocery store for you um, for a period of 14 days and until you're no longer having a fever or other symptoms. Studies have shown that if you're no longer having symptoms and 14 days have passed, then the virus can no longer be cultured from your body and so you're highly unlikely to be infectious. Um, along with that, people have asked if I get COVID, can I get it again? How long is my immunity good for? The best scientific data suggests that if you get COVID, you are immune to being reinfected, but we're just not sure how long this immunity will last for. It will likely be a while before we know the answer to this question. With many other coronaviruses that cause minor respiratory infections, our immunity was, has been very short-lived. But with other coronaviruses that cause more severe disease like SARS, our immunity lasted a year or more. And finally, the million dollar question, how will we uh, and governments figure out when we can go back to work, back to school, and back to some semblance of a social life? Um, when the number of new cases of disease go down below a certain level, and we have the ability um, to do large numbers of um, blood antibody tests and the PCR test to determine who has some immunity to the disease, then we will begin the pro be able to begin the process of reopening schools and workplaces and social gathering spaces with some modifications. These will likely include increased spacing, recommendations to continue with social distancing, ongoing vigorous hand washing or hand sanitizing recommendations, and a strict message that if you are sick, you need to stay home from work or school. If an individual does become sick, testing needs to be done immediately to determine whether that person is sick with the COVID virus. And if they are, then uh, strict and enforced quarantining for individuals that are infected and close contacts will likely occur via cell phone apps, public health officer visits, and phone calls. And that's about it. If you have any other questions, please feel free to email me. Thank you.